Hello everyone and welcome to another technical overview video of Black Square's TBM850. Today we're going to be talking about electrical systems, one of the areas where Black Square's aircraft really shine compared to other payware aircraft, but especially the default ones. And not just because every electrical circuit is implemented and integrated with the failure system and values assigned to it by a proprietary electrical calculating toolbox, but also because the underlying electrical calculations of the simulator have been redone for greater realism. One of the areas this is most evident is that default aircraft have no sense of battery charging current or voltage drop associated with current draw. We can easily see this is not the case with Black Square's aircraft by turning on the power and engaging the starter motor. First, we see a massive starting current and an associated voltage drop. After a few seconds as the motor starts to spin up, we see the current is reduced and the voltage returns towards the nominal. Now, if you're not in the habit of watching electrical meters while starting your aircraft, there is a secondary effect that you've no doubt noticed, either in your real world flying or while watching videos online. Let's switch to night to take a look at that new special effect. We'll start by connecting the battery to the aircraft and turning on some interior cabin lighting. Take note that the battery's nominal voltage is around 25.5 volts. Again, we'll engage the starter motor. This time, watch the intensity of the cockpit lighting. The incandescent lights dim as the voltage is pulled down not just for the starter motor, but for absolutely any electrical load in the aircraft, no matter how small. When gas generator RPM reaches its maximum, we supply fuel to the engine by moving the condition lever to low idle. Watch the ITT, and then when gas generator RPM approaches 50%, we disengage the starter motor. When we do, we'll see the voltage come almost all the way back up to the 25.5 nominal. But that's inside the yellow arc on this meter and not the green. When we turn on the primary generator, we'll see the cockpit lighting intensity increase further still as the voltage comes up to the 28 volt maximum. We'll also see a charging current indicated for the battery. It's important to monitor the battery charging current after starting, especially if you've significantly drained the battery before your flight. This is because significant charge or discharge at the battery terminals can actually melt the junction, disconnecting the battery permanently from the aircraft. Temperature is also calculated at each of the circuit breakers, meaning that when a failure is initiated, the breaker doesn't pop out immediately, but instead waits until there's current flowing through the circuit. This is discussed further in the first technical overview video on the failure systems in Black Square's TBM 850. All of this means that if you're flying at night, your first indication of a primary generator failure might be the sudden dimming of your cockpit lighting before you've even had a chance to process what kind of failure just occurred. While we're talking about lighting, now's a good time to discuss the potentially confusing lighting systems in this aircraft, which are actually designed for safety and convenience. For starters, we have an instrument panel floodlight, and individual instrument lighting, and a soft light on the overhead panel. We also have emergency instrument lighting, which is connected directly to the battery to be used during electrical emergencies. We also have reading lights for pilot and co-pilot, and dimmable lights on each yoke for reading maps and charts. Now is a good time to mention that when you're turning lights on and off in this aircraft, you're not simply turning them on and off. The heating and cooling of the incandescent filament is actually being simulated. Did you see it? Fast to heat up, slow to cool down. Now let's discuss the cabin lighting system. On the main instrument panel, there's a push button labeled Access. This toggles on and off lights strategically placed in the cabin in areas that you might be navigating while boarding the aircraft. They can also be toggled on and off by push buttons at these locations on the overhead panel. There are also individual reading lights above each passenger seat. But in such a small cabin, these reading lights could have an adverse impact on the pilot's nighttime vision while conducting a night approach. For this reason, a switch on the instrument panel labeled cabin can be used to enforce a dark cockpit for nighttime operations. 
Lastly, don't forget your glow-in-the-dark emergency exit sign. It's required equipment. Before we finish up with the electrical systems during the daytime, I have one more fine detail that's ubiquitous to nighttime flying, and that is strobe lights, or at least the sound they make when you're sitting on the ground and listening to the radios with your headset on. Can you hear the capacitors charging after every flash? It's subtle, but it really puts a pilot back in the left seat and ready for a nighttime takeoff. Finishing up with the electrical systems, we'll discuss ground clearance mode and the essential bus tie. During normal operation, the aircraft is receiving its electrical power through the main generator, with the battery as a secondary source. However, let's say that we lose both of those options due to a failure. We also lose all of our flight instrumentation and even the enunciator panel, but not COM1. And that's because we have the radio master switch on and we're in ground clearance mode as indicated by the green LED. This is a convenience feature that allows us to power up COM1 to receive ATC clearance on the ground without having to bring up the rest of the aircraft and drain the battery. Unfortunately, this is of little use to us if we're in flight and have no primary instrumentation. Thankfully, we have the red guarded essential bus tie switch on top of the circuit breaker panel. If we put the switch in emergency mode, we'll get back most of the instrumentation that we lost, including our EFIS display, altimeter, transponder, and more. To know exactly what, we have to look at the electrical schematic included in the manual to see exactly which loads are depicted under each bus. A final feature worth mentioning on the circuit breaker panel is the meaning behind these white squares. Not black squares, white squares. The circuit breakers on the white squares look a little bit different, and that's because they can be pulled by hand, and sometimes are required to be by checklists for load shedding or troubleshooting. In this simulation, all the circuit breakers can be pulled by hand. Lastly, if you ever have a failure that knocks out just one of your EFIS display screens, you can always press the Composite Mode button, which will display all of the information on both screens, or whichever screen has not failed. I hope you all enjoyed this overview of the electrical systems in Black Square's TBM 850, and you're looking forward to having some electrifying adventures of your own soon. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.